everyone, Misco Electric here at the NASCAR Cup Series Championship at the Phoenix Raceway. And today is Sunday, November 10th, 2024. This is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. This week, I'm with the team at AVB, a company which is enabling the electrification of everything across the globe. Back in July, I published detailed videos on this channel and over at the Misco Electric Industry channel, which go into great detail about their number 35 all-electric NASCAR from Chicago. I'll link those in the video description along with a fun man-on-the-street interview series called Electric Conversations, where we find out how NASCAR fans feel about electrification. Today, I'll be sharing new footage from the track on social media platforms like X and Instagram, so I hope you'll join me there. Let's race right into the first story. On Thursday, Rivian disclosed its third quarter financial performance, revealing a significant year-over-year -year revenue drop of 35%, totaling $874 million against expectations of $1.3 billion. Rivian attributes the reduction to production disruptions and a less favorable consumer environment. The company spent about $140 million less this quarter than in Q2. They produced 13,157 vehicles and delivered 10,000 in 18 units in the third quarter. They stated that their electric delivery van will likely make up more than 20% of sales in Q4 compared to about 8% in Q3, and that they'll increase production of their tri-motor configuration for the R1 platform, which will help them realize better profit per unit in Q4. It looks like they expect nearly $300 million of carbon credit revenue as well. They've reaffirmed their projections of 50,500 to 52,000 vehicles delivered in 2024, which is down from their original projection of 57,000. They reiterated that they've got almost $7 billion in cash, which they think should last into production of the R2 platform. During the earnings call, the company revealed that LG Energy Solutions will make Rivian's smaller upcoming SUV, the R2's 4695 cylindrical cells in Queen Creek, Arizona, which means that those vehicles could qualify for IRA subsidies if the incoming administration decides to leave those intact. Speaking of political crosswinds, Tesla stock soared from $245 to $325 after Donald Trump won the election on Tuesday, revisiting a market cap of over $1 trillion for the first time this year. Presumably, investors expect Elon Musk's relationship with the 47th president will benefit the automaker. Other Tesla news this week includes delivery of the first Foundation Series Cybertrucks in Canada. Some had speculated that sales may not happen because the steer-by-wire system didn't meet legal requirements. Transport Canada, the governing body for transportation in the country, granted Tesla a temporary exemption to use steer-by-wire technology in the Cybertruck for five years, starting in July, provided that Tesla delivers a semi-annual incident report, including information on steering system malfunctions, corrective measures, and customer complaints, as well as any over-the-air updates that may affect the steer-by-wire system. Might Tesla negotiate similar homologation exemptions overseas, enabling sales in Europe and Asia? Another Cybertruck demand lover Tesla pulled this week is the introduction of a leasing program. Rates are as low as $999 for the dual motor configuration, with $7,500 down for 36 months and 10,000 miles. Tri-motor Cyber Beasts are listed with the same conditions for $1,148 per month. Regardless, Cybertruck leases will be able to collect on the $7,500 tax credit as well, which erases the deposit for eligible buyers. Tesla also started offering one year of unlimited complimentary supercharging for Model Y buyers through the end of the year. It looks like they're pulling out all the stops to sell about a half a million vehicles this quarter in order to hit their annual targets. A few automakers teased upcoming EVs this week, including Mercedes, which revealed they're working on another full-size electric SUV. This one will be built on their AMG EA electric performance architecture, which had been announced in 2021. The platform includes axial flux motors from their acquisition of Yasa. The motors are smaller, lighter, and have high performance capabilities. Mercedes says their new electric platforms would leverage battery cell technology advancements from partners like Zila Nano to further increase energy density by using silicon carbon composites in the anode. 
Mercedes says this will allow for unprecedented range and reduced charging times, but no further details were offered. Volkswagen Group's luxury brand Bentley has also shared this EV silhouette along with some sour news. They're pushing back their plans to go all electric by 2030. They're now saying they'll produce plug-in hybrid options until 2035. Bentley chairman and CEO Frank Stefan Volleser said, there's not a lot of demand for EVs from current customers. Legislation for sure is driving electrification, but also competition. We have to be honest, there's not a lot of demand. That approach will certainly clear the lane for brands like Genesis to peel away more Bentley customers with a production version of the Genesis X convertible and Rolls Royce with the Spectre and inevitably a convertible variant. Bentley did, however, announce their first all-electric luxury urban SUV will debut in 2026 and go on sale in 2027. It's expected to be smaller than the Mentega they currently sell. The first Bentley EV has been delayed previously due to software issues and the development of the electric architecture, meeting Bentley standards. The vehicle will be built on Volkswagen Group's PPE platform, which houses an 800-volt architecture and can be found in current models, the Porsche Macan EV and Audi Q6 e-tron. Volvo has provided an update on the U.S. launch of their most affordable compact electric SUV, the EX30. Initially, the U.S. release was set for 2025, but they are ahead of schedule. This quarter, some American reservation holders will take delivery of twin motor performance variants starting at $44,900. Next year, they'll start delivering the single motor version starting at $34,950. The twin motor performance model is offered in the plus or ultra trim, outputting up to 422 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque with a 69 kilowatt hour battery estimated to deliver up to 253 miles of range with a peak DC fast charging rate of 153 kilowatts. It will also be able to tow up to 2,000 pounds and has a cargo capacity of 31.9 cubic feet. When the 100% US tariffs on Chinese made EVs went into effect, Volvo announced they would utilize their Ghent Belgium factory for the EX30 in order to avoid price increases. That plant is not yet churning out EX30s, so the first batch of US bound EX30s will be coming from their manufacturing facility in China. This week, Volvo also announced that their EVs can charge on the Tesla supercharging network. That is great timing for the new EX30 owners. Volvo says the X30 is their most popular fully electric model. They've sold 82,053 globally since deliveries began last December. This quarter, Volvo All Electric sales doubled compared to the third quarter last year. Battery electric vehicles accounted for 25% of their retail sales worldwide. Many of you also subscribe to the Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel for coverage of motorcycles, boats, e-bikes, and scooters. It's been a while since I shared a great two-wheel e-mobility story on The Current, but this week, there is plenty of good news. EICMA, also known as the Milan Motorcycle Show, took place this week and there were some exciting electric motor reveals. Storied English brand Royal Enfield showed off their new sub-brand of electric motorcycles called Flying Flea, named for a model they first produced in the 1940s. The first two models shown here are called the C6 and S6. They did not share any pricing, range, or performance details, but it is marketed as an urban bike. Competitors in that category offer a range somewhere around 100 miles, with pricing between $6,000 and $15,000. Royal Enfield said these models would offer phone as key technology, remote updates, built-in navigation, and reverse mode. Sales are expected to begin in 2026. Honda also debuted some electric concepts at the show they're calling the EV Fun Concept, which is a mid-sized sport model expected to come to market in 2025, and their EV Urban Concept, which the company says will be the vision for an urban model in the near future. The Urban Concept will include connected technologies and Honda's in-house developed battery pack. I think the Urban Concept reminds me a lot of the BMW CEO4, which is what producer Tim rides. The CEO4 features battery modules from the BMW iX and it demonstrates an advantage automakers could have in the motorcycle space. Honda says these concepts are an introduction to their plan to introduce 30 electric two-wheel vehicles globally by 2030. 
Another notable reveal comes from American motorcycle manufacturer Zero Motorcycles. They took the cover off three models. One is a concept and two are production intent. The new X-Line is an off-road electric bike designed to compete with the very popular Chinese imported Suron Light B and Talaria dirt bikes. The XB has a top speed of 47 miles per hour and outputs up to 10 horsepower with 274 pound-feet of torque. It has a removable 2.4 kilowatt hour battery that can deliver up to 40 miles of range on a full charge and recharges in about three hours. It weighs just 139 pounds. Zero says it is the most affordable in its class with a price tag of $4,195. The XE is more of a trial style bike that competes with e-motos like the exquisite Stark Varg. It has a top speed of 53 miles per hour and outputs up to 20 horsepower. It has a 4.3 kilowatt hour battery that can deliver up to 65 miles of range and recharge in about five hours. It weighs 223 pounds and is listed for $6,495. The big standout features of both of these models compared to competitors is Zero's TFT instrument screen to cycle through different ride modes and performance settings along with their high quality componentry and more readily available distribution network. Both X-Line models will be off-road only in the US market. They'll be street legal in Europe. Perhaps my favorite reveal from Zero had to be their mini bike concept called the Neutrino. Although there are no details on the concept at this point, a smaller, affordable, street legal electric motorcycle is always welcome in the US marketplace. Zero says they will launch six models over the next two years, and they said each one will have a retail price under $10,000. Bring it on. Just two weeks ago, Zero raised $120 million in a new funding round. Well, that wraps up today's episode. If you found value in the current, please consider sharing a link to this episode online. We need to reach a larger audience in order to continue producing this show every week. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to join me on other social media platforms, including X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up to the minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you so much for watching. And until next week, drive, fly, ride, go electric.